Carly, Laura, Jeff in Las Vegas, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, uh, six weeks, four networks, 21 premieres, Nat Geo, Disney Plus, Shark Fest is the summer event. The beaches are open. <laughs> A little joke there. <laughs> uh, Carly, let's begin with you. Shark Attack Files, how much have we learned about the behavior of sharks in recent years? Has there been any new revelations? Yeah, so we've definitely learned a lot about uh, how sharks are, you know, making decisions in the wild right now. And there's definitely a lot more <laughs> we need to learn. Um, they're very cryptic species and, you know, they move around a lot. So it is really hard to research um, some of their new behavior. But in the show, we go into investigating a lot of the different behaviors that we see in different species. So it's a diversity of species and uh, we learn a lot about uh, the way they act and how they make certain decisions. It is often said that sharks have bad vision. That is actually not true. However, obviously we all know that in murky waters, it's hard to see both for us and for sharks. According to Paige and Kale, the water that June day was murky. But sharks have a system called ampullae of Lorenzini that allows for them to sense their surroundings and be very aware of what's moving right in front of them, even if visibility is very poor. Laura, what can you tell me about the Page Winter story? It, it, something to do with sharks' poor eyesight or? Sharks don't actually have uh, poor eyesight. That's more of a myth. Uh, but Page was attacked in an area where visibility was very low. The water was very murky. It had rained the day before. So there was a mix of like fresh and salt water, what we call more brackish water. So it wasn't the best conditions for the shark to see Paige properly and figure out that it was not in fact food. Carly and Eli are soon surrounded by more nurse sharks than they can count. But are any of them willing to take the leap up onto land? These sharks slowly started creeping towards the steps where that squid was. He's coming, he's coming. Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at him coming out. Look at that. And Carly, your shark research includes feeding tourism on nurse shark in Belize. I mean, that's such an amazing, amazing credit on your resume. It sounds so cool. Um, on the scale of being aggressive, where does the nurse shark place? The sharks are very, very, very low on the scale. Um, they have the nickname, the puppies of the sea. Uh, because they are very lazy. They'll sit at the bottom. Um, they're also very cute, if I do say so myself. Um, and they are only aggressive if they're provoked. So usually if you get bit by a nurse shark, it is 100% your fault. <laughs> I have some friends that sounds like that. They're lazy and they lay on the bottom. <laughs> and, they... <laughs> and, and Laura, you know, Jaws is my favorite movie of all time. And I I know the story behind that when that movie came out, it had the reverse effect that people were hunting sharks to extinction. And even Peter Benchley, who wrote the book, spent the rest of his life about conservation. So, uh, you know, and also shark fin soup and all kinds of crazy things that happened to sharks. Has it rebounded in the past decades? What's the shark population like now? So in general, uh, shark populations are still declining. There are some conservation efforts that have proved successful. For example, here in Florida, we have the example of the sandbar shark, which was fished for many, many years. And then due to conservation efforts, now the numbers are like just going up and up. It's great. You go anywhere in Florida and you can dive with sandbar sharks now, which are very pretty sharks. Um, or, you know, great white sharks, we've had that too. You protect the prey species, the seal, and you see more great white sharks, which, you know, some people in Cape Cod might not love, but it is a conservation success story. So in general, unfortunately, they are still declining, mostly due to overfishing for their fins and their meat. But there are some conservation success story. And I think the key point there is that if we do have the information and the data available, we can protect shark species. 
And Carly, what was the defining moment for you where you decided to study marine biology? Was there a certain event, a TV show, or, or an experience? Um, I read a book. <laughs> so I was six years old, um, and I saw a book that had a shark on the front, just a big picture of the shark. I was like, that looks really cool. I want to read that. So I read the book, and I don't remember exactly what it was that captivated me about sharks, but I just remember just falling in love. I just knew I wanted to work with sharks. And that was the one thing that stuck throughout the years and um, decided to pursue a career in marine biology. And Laura, what about you? What was that defining moment for you? Um, for me, there were two. Um, one you've actually mentioned, it was watching Deep Blue Sea. I love that movie. And when <laughs> I was little, I was obsessed with it. I wanted to be one of the scientists that made intelligent sharks for some reason. Um, then, you know, my career interest switched within shark science, but the scientist part stuck around. And the other one was when I was 10, I visited the largest aquarium in Europe, which is in Spain, where I'm from. And I was able to, you know, see the beluga whales for the first time or the sharks from the Red Sea, which there's like a great biodiversity of fauna there. And just seeing that, you know, you go to the beach and you just see water, like that expands to the horizon and getting to see what was underwater really captivated me. And I just wanted to become a marine scientist and learn more about it. Wow, we have something in common. When I started as a film critic, uh, Deep Blue Sea was one of the first movies I covered in New York, so. <laughs> great movie. Yeah, you know, great movie, yeah. Uh, I remember Samuel Jackson telling me he had his uh, Robert Shaw moment, you know, when he was talking and the shark grabbed him. <laughs> The best well, part. <laughs> <it> <laughs> Laura, thank you so much for joining me. I love Shark Fest. I can't wait to, to see. I just, I've been locked in watching it already, you know. So uh, thank you both so much for your dedication and your professionalism. And when you have a break, come visit us in Las Vegas. We'd love to have you. Of course. Thank you so much.